know that everyone who knew him and loved him is going to miss him. And he might have been retired. He may have not had much money. But he was not poor by any stretch of the imagination. Just look at his fruit.
<laughs> okay. Um, how do I pronounce this? Is it a Sayatu? Saytu. Each other 
uh, and to be able to demonstrate our love to each other and not to be ashamed or hesitant to do that. <laughs> I was in um, San Francisco. I had a, a very rare opportunity. They paid me to come and, and do this speech, right? And this is big. And they canceled the speech, but they still paid for the room. So I was, you know, I was out there and it was a big party and all that kind of stuff. And then I came home and it was one message on the answering machine. So I said, oh, wow, this is really a blessing. I had a week in San Francisco and it was one message. I'll answer, you know, I'll check the message when I get around to it. And I checked the message, and it was the Grand Diva saying, be here on Friday. You know, and, um, and I really feel so thankful to you for giving me this chance to be here today, because that is here. And um, there's so many things that, that, that I love about them. One of the things was that his mind was always working. He was always reading. And in his own way, he was always challenging you to do better things. And one of the last books we talked about was the Quran. I don't know what religion men claimed, but I know that God and the ancestors have claimed him. And that he's hanging out with now. Um, and I thought that I should try and write something, you know, original for this. And, and with everything. But then Grand Diva told me she was going to talk about the fact that he was born in a party of America. That was as serious as, 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 as it needed to be. And then I thought about music. It was something about his lips. He always reminded me of Miles. And so I said, well, I'll write about Lynn being a trumpet. But then I thought about the fact that the world is too full of trumpet people. You know, braggadocious, brassy, full of hot air. I said, no, nah, Lynn don't, don't want to be that. And then I looked in the program, and it said he was a master ebonicator. Lynn is bad. <laughs> and then I thought, that's it. Lynn is our drum. He's our heartbeat. And the last time I saw him, he was moving, you know, with this kind of rhythm. Lynn was timeless. He was like when they broke Grand Panster Brothers used to wear that three quarter leather. You know. um, but I think that, 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 that the thing that, that, that I admire most about Lynn is that he was cool. He was cool, or he even stopped on green lights. Super cool, ultra black, a tan purple, had a beautiful shade, had a double natural that, that would put his sister to shame. That was a few years ago. Um, his beads were imported seashells from some black country I never heard of. He was triple hit. His tiki's were hand carved and came express from the motherland. He would greet you in Swahili or say goodbye in Yoruba. Jim, he'd be so cool and intelligent, cool, cool, and super cool. He was uncool by other niggas cool. Cool, cool, ultra cool, was bop cool, icebox cool. Cool, so cool, cold cool, his wine didn't have to be cool. He was air conditioned cool. Cool, cool, real cool, made me cool down. That's really cool. <laughs> cool, cool, so cool, him nickname refrigerator. And before Detroit and Newark and Chicago, after Watts and Cindy Valley and Rodney King, Lynn was always there.
cool, cool, super cool with the Grand Deeper to remind us that to be black is also to be very high. So then wherever you are, you know, the Grand Deeper will be cool because we're going to love her like she loved you and like you loved us. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 